Hey everyone, it's Miss Morton here and today I want to help you with how to navigate Microsoft 365 and particularly how to use OneNote. This video is designed for students or parents and I know a lot of teachers use OneNote as their teaching platform, myself included. And for some students, particularly those starting out in year seven or even primary school, it can be difficult to remember the steps of how to get onto OneNote and how to use it. I do think OneNote is a fantastic tool for teaching and learning. So if you are interested in figuring out the ins and outs of OneNote, then just keep on watching. So while you can get onto Microsoft 365 through the student portal, I actually think the easiest way is just to Google Microsoft 365 and you'll see that it's actually the pretty well the first address that comes up. Sometimes there might be ads before it, but the one that you want to click on is the one that I just clicked on, which is login. And then you want to click on the sign in button and it will take you to a page for you to sign in. Normally it will come up with a space for you to type in your email address, but obviously because I've been logging on to 365 on this computer before, it took me straight to my Department of Education login page. I was able to put in my uh, username and password and that took me straight to my profile. So I just click yes for that, stay signed in. So once you get onto the 365 homepage, it should look like this and you'll see across the top of the screen, there is all the Microsoft apps. So one of the big ones is OneDrive and this is a place where you can store all your documents. And as you can see from mine, when it decides to load, that I have created folders for different things. So I've got um, an English folder, a history folder, um, evidence, notebooks, etc. And you can upload your files. And also if you click on the shared, if anyone has shared a file with you, it will be in that space on OneDrive. So coming back to the homepage, there's also spaces for you to access Word, Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint, Teams, which is really great if you're in a team and want to communicate. And there's also a place for you to access Sway. But the first thing I want to show you is OneNote because that is the main purpose that I use 365 for. So as you can see, these are all the OneNotes that I've created for, for my classes. And these are all the ones that have been shared with me. So some of those actually belong to me. And when I create them, they get shared with me. When you log on to 365 and you're going to OneNote, all the OneNotes that you've recently accessed will be in the recents. But if a teacher has just added you to a OneNote, it won't be in recents, it will be in shared with me until you access it for the first time. So when you open your class notebook, you will come to a welcome page. I've made mine look nice with a picture and my email, but yours might just have the stock standard OneNote welcome page. The main place that you want to go to on your class notebook is the content library, which is where your teacher will put all of the coursework. So this OneNote is a little bit different in the sense that year seven is a cross-curricular English and geography history subject. So in my content library, I have different folders for those three subjects. And within the subject, I have created pages for the topics. So as you can see for English, I have a page for topic one language and subsequent pages for the other topics afterwards. What I like to do is put all my work on using a table just so that it chunks it out and makes it obvious where the separate points of content are. You can see that I've got the activities, I've got links to different websites, I can put pictures in, I can put YouTube videos embedded in there as well. 
and if you click over on the different subjects so from English to history you will see that I've organized history the same way in the different topics so as a parent or student, the two main things that you need to know about using OneNote is the content library and how you can navigate through the different topics and the different pages to access information and to be able to use any of the links or resources provided like this website that I'm showing you here. But you also need to know about your own individual page. So you can't see because I've got them blurred out, but I have added all the students in my class to this OneNote and underneath the content library, I can personally see all of their names. And if I click on any of their pages, they will be able to have topics set up just like I have. So English, history and geography and they can make their own pages within those topics. So my biggest suggestion to students is when you get into the content library, copy over the information that the teacher has set out for you on their pages onto your own pages in your own personal folder because you will not be able to edit and type on any of the work in the content library. The teacher puts that up and they are the only one that is allowed to actually click on it and edit it. So for you to be able to be doing these activities, unless you are doing them in your workbook, you will need to copy them over. You will need to hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. OneNote does not like the right click and you trying to right click, copy and paste won't work. So now I'm going to go back out of my class notebook and I'm back on the sort of home page for OneNote. And in order to get back to the actual Microsoft 365 home page, there's this little waffle up in the top left hand corner and you just click on that and all of the apps will show up. And that's just an easy way to navigate from one app to the next. So here I have clicked on um, PowerPoint and you can see that there is a number of different templates. They're quite similar to the, the PowerPoint that you would get on the desktop version. And then going back to my waffle, this time I could click on Excel, I could click on Word, and same deal with PowerPoint. When you click on the Word app, when it comes up, you'll be able to see that it has an option for a blank document, or it also has a bunch of templates that you can use. And if you click on more templates, it will be able to show you some other options, things like brochures, business cards, feature articles, resumes that you can access and complete in Word Online. So the final feature that I want to show you guys using Microsoft 365 is Sway. So very similar to Google Sites, Sway is Microsoft's um, website, easy website design. So you can see that there are different templates that you can use for that, which also happens with sites. So here I just selected one, I think it's a food blog one and it's generating the template. And you can see it comes up with the page and allows you to edit any of the features and put in your own writing, your own pictures. So here there's space for the title of the blog, the posts, um, the images, captions. You can just change it and edit it and easily add things yourself. So you see uh, that little green icon that's come up there. You can plus and add sections yourself. There's also space for you to sort of edit the font and... Um, 
the size of the writing. So there's heaps of sort of interactive features on Sway. Um, I do think it's probably as easy to use as Google Sites, but maybe the end product comes out looking a little bit more visually appealing than Google Sites. There's also these options to upload and embed different content to make your website look engaging. So then back to the home page, if you scroll down underneath the apps, you can see the recent Word documents that you've used. You can see the recent OneNotes that you've opened up and click on any of those as just nice, easy shortcuts. And then there are other OneDrive folders that you've recently accessed. So everything you've recently used is on the home page, and that pretty well wraps up the tour. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you have any further OneNote or Microsoft 365 questions, don't forget to leave them in the description box below. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.